Welcome to Coding in Style, a series of short videos about how to improve our coding. This is Dragos and you are watching the episode number 9, where we talk about how to reduce the complexity of a program. What if you ask somebody the following question, how can I get to the downtown? And the answer was, you take the bus 102 or the bus 103. If you take the 102, you go for two blocks and get off. Then, if it's morning, you take 104. If it's evening and during weekday, you take 105. But if it's weekend, you take 106. If you take 104, you get off after three blocks. If you take 105, after five blocks. And so on. Nobody can remember such a thing. But lots of times, this is the way we write our code. As you know, the developing process does not end when you finish a task. It does not end when you launch the product or when you fix a bug. It finishes only when the code and the product are trashed and erased from existence. Until then, every little piece of code you write has a big chance to be visited again and changed. Because of that, it is a good idea to write awesome code every step of the way. Do to others and you have them do to you can be translated in this case write your code as you would like others to write the code for you. In good style that is. Maybe one of the most important quality of the code is to be easy to understand. If nobody can understand our code, it does not mean that we are very smart and the code is awesome. No. On the contrary. It means our brain is so complicated that we are not able to write simple code. There is one measure for complexity of the code, for the complexity of the code. It is called cyclomatic complexity. The cyclomatic complexity defines the number of possible paths a piece of code can follow. It can be defined for a whole app or just for a function. Let's take a few examples. This is a simple function that is just printing hello because it has only one path in, in which it can be executed it has the complexity one. Let's write another function a bit more complicated. We see that we have two paths in which the function can be executed. Once when n is greater than 0 and another one uh, if it's not. We, because we have two ways in which this uh, method can be executed, the complexity is 2. We can reduce the complexity just returning directly the boolean resulting from comparing n to 0. Let's have another example. What if we wanted a function that will return, will convert a, a, a number, a digit, to string? So instead of digit 1, will return 1, and so on and so forth. Let's quickly run, uh, write this function. As you can see, the function is pretty ugly. If there was a measure for ugliness, probably this function would have the ugliness 1000. But regarding the complexity, there are 10, 11 actually, 11 different paths in which this function can be executed. So the complexity is 11, which is a huge one. What to do? We can reduce a bit the complexity by getting smarter. First, let's create an array of all the possible returns of this function. We'll use this array only if the number we receive is between 0 and 9. 
else will return unknown. As you can see in this case, we have only two options. First, when n is greater than 0 and less than 9, less or equal to 9, and the second option uh, in a different case. So this complexity now from 11 is down to 2. Also, the method is way easier to understand and to change. Let's assume we want to add a 10 here. Right? We just quickly change it in this way. Let's take a bit uh, an example a bit more complex in which we want to format one function of one address. that has as parameters street city and country this function would need to return the a nicely formatted address with uh, comma between the elements but there is an option that each of these elements is uh, empty so then we don't have to return two commas or uh, spaces so we have lots of different cases first we have to check if the street is empty and we have to proceed in a certain way then we have to check if the city is empty. Then we have to check if the country is empty. As you can see, we have eight different possibility, possibilities in which this function can be executed which is pretty complex. We can reduce this by dividing this function into two functions. First, we'll write one function that just appends one element. Okay, and then we delete the whole thing from the for formatting the function and We just uh, use this append item uh, function. Let's write a quick test to see if our function is working properly. It's working almost okay, except we have an extra comma at the end. So we have to write a piece of code to remove that uh, comma at the end. Don't worry if you don't understand this code, it's enough to understand that it's removing the comma at the end. So we see that now we have a nicely formatted uh, address. So we reduced from a big complexity of 8 to just a complexity of 2 in this the case of append item function and another complexity of 2 for this format address. Much easier to understand. That's about it for today. We talked about reducing the complexity of the code. What do you think about the topic? What are other ways you use to reduce the complexity of your code? Feel free to leave a message, to send me a message or leave a comment on this video. And also I would really appreciate if you shared it with others. Do you have any idea of a topic you would like to create a video for? Just send me a message. That's about it for now. See you next time.